Hello, good morning. I am here in my jammies. I don't plan on getting dressed <laughs> today, so I figured, hmm, why not? Well, first off, I have a lovely friend and client who is getting married this weekend, and I was supposed to do her wedding makeup. I've done makeup on her as a bridesmaid, I think five or six times. And even though I don't like technically do professional makeup anymore, just for my own reasons, I was really excited to do her wedding makeup because I've done her makeup so many times as a bridesmaid and really cool and full circle to get to do her makeup as a bride, but I don't get to do that because of the lockdown. The good news for that is that when they do get to have their actual like party for their wedding, I am going to do her makeup for that. So that's my kind of like consolation prize, I guess. But today I'm gonna do on my face, the eye look that I would have done on her face because she just is like the most easygoing, the most lovely. She always trusts me and lets me do whatever I want <laughs> with her makeup, which I always really appreciate. I already have um, moisturized my skin and primed my eyes. I also am wearing these really cute earrings that my friend Caitlin made me that she just dropped off. So I wanted to wear them because they're really pretty. Anyway, that's a side note. So because we're going bridal, I'm going to do something fairly neutral with like a little bit of a kind of pinky tone because I kind of like those like rosy tones for brides. I'm going to use the Anastasia Sultry palette which looks like that. I'm going to take Twig first which is this shade right here. And I'm going to blend that across my crease. So if you wanted to see a true neutral look for me because I know I did a neutral look before but I put lime green in the inner corner <laughs> because I'm out of control. I mean, this is going to be that because I would never put a bright, like vibrant color on a bride because that's just not, unless that was something they wore all the time. Oh, I should mention, I also have my brows done already. I'm gonna take Dystopian, which is that kind of rich chocolatey brown. I'm gonna take that just in my outer corner. Keep in mind too, I did wanna say, when you see me blending in videos, I often, if I'm not talking while I'm blending, I will cut it out just to like not make the videos super long because for Instagram they need to be um, 15 minutes or less. So I often cut out a lot of my time I spend blending. I spend a long time blending shadows just to make sure that they are as soft and as blended looking as they can be. So if you feel like, how did it go from looking like this to looking like this? It's because I had to cut out myself just sitting here quietly <laughs> blending so pretty much always like you can you can over I was gonna say you can't over blend you can over blend you can kind of lose your um colors a little bit but you can always fix that by adding some more so if you felt like you've gone a little too far with your blending you can always add a little bit more to it most shadows won't just blend away um some of them will really really softly pressed eyeshadows I find are the ones that more often than not can just blend away like that. By softly pressed, I mean when you dip into them and there's a ton of kick up in your pan, like there's a lot of powder in your pan, those are more softly pressed shadows and they lots of times will disappear as you blend, if you blend too much. And that's just something you have to kind of learn from playing within your own collection. Not every palette is like that. And some softly pressed palettes aren't like that. Like the Anastasia palettes, are like relatively soft pressed. Like I have tons of kick up in this pan. And they don't blend away to nothing. Like as you can see, that brown is building and getting darker as we go. I can take a clean blending brush with no product on it and just kind of mesh those two together a little more. I'm gonna use my NYX glitter primer on my lid. This is something I love doing for brides, especially because you know you're gonna be wearing this I look for a long time. Normally I'm doing wedding makeup at like anywhere from five in the morning to like at the latest I'll be finishing like around 10 or 11, sometimes noon, but I try to do the bride near the end just to make sure that she can have her makeup be the freshest out of everybody in the party. But you're wearing this makeup for a long time. Like for my own wedding, I was doing my own makeup at about 10 in the morning and I wore it until we got back to the hotel at like three o'clock in the morning, I think, two or three in the morning. It was really late um, and my makeup still looked the same, except for I ripped off my fake lashes. I ripped those off, I think at like one o'clock in the morning. 
because they were lifting from crying so much, but that's okay. They held on through what they needed to hold on through. Mm, no, maybe we'll do rose quartz just to get that little bit of a pinky like bridal feel to it. So I'm just gonna place that where I put that glitter primer. I'm gonna take Rustic from the Soft Glam palette. The Sultry palette's a little darker than I'm wanting right now. So I'm gonna take Rustic from this little, small little blending brush and just dab a couple times. And starting in the outer corner, I'm gonna place that down and then I'm gonna blend it across my crease a little bit. I just wanna warm up the colors a little. That twig ended up being a little more cool tone than I planned it being. Once again, I'm gonna take that clean blending brush that I used before and just blend away at the edges a little. And then sometimes what happens to me is I will blend my darker like crease shades a little higher than I meant to because I have to kind of fake that lid. So sometimes I end up blending a little too high. So what I'll do is take a light shade, like I'm taking Tempera from um, the Soft Glam Palette, which is just like a light cream shade. You can do this with your loose powders and stuff too. Um, I just take that light cream shade and blend it right over the seam. I'm gonna take the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I'm gonna take this flat concealer brush. I just take a bit of that on my brush. You could also do this with your finger if you really wanted to. I don't always feel like getting my fingers dirty, but using this kind of brush too will, um, it gives you a little bit of a lighter layer of concealer. If you use your finger, you can, because your heat from your fingers is warming up the product in the pot, Sometimes that can mean you're getting a little bit heavier of an application um, versus with the brush like this, you are just putting on a light little bit, so it's not quite as much. This concealer is pretty decent coverage. I would say it is, using it like this, I would say it's a medium. If you used more of it or with a different application, it could be a full coverage concealer. It covers quite a bit. I like it to cover my little red spots on my cheeks and stuff. I'm gonna take this densely packed brush and just stamp under my eyes where I place that concealer. This is one thing too, for anybody who likes baking their under eyes, I'm just going to explain, because I've had a couple of brides ask why I don't bake when I'm doing makeup on um, for weddings. The reason I don't is because when you're baking, you're putting such a heavy amount of powder under your eye. You're being photographed all day. So if you're using a powder that heavily, what ends up happening is you can have, in photos, is you'll get flashback. The rest of your face looks one color and then your under eyes or wherever you've put a, that heavy amount of powder, it will get that like super white, like ghostly looking effect under the eyes. And in photos, it just looks awful. And like for regular like life stuff, like I've had, I'm sure I have photos of me like from when I was in my earlier 20s at the bar and stuff where I have flashback. But like, you probably don't want to look like you're ghostly white only under your eyes in your wedding photos like that's why I don't why I never baked brides or bridesmaids any makeup I do that's being photographed on video that's fine it's not the same but in photos it just doesn't translate very well the powder that I've been using for years I've tried a couple other ones that I haven't ended up liking I've been using the Kat Von I guess it's not Kat Von D anymore it's the KBD Vegan Beauty I've been using their loose powder forever just in the translucent it's a little bit yellow toned so it goes better, goes a little better with my skin because I'm a little bit more of a warmer skin tone. Okay, all that to say, <laughs> don't bake your under eyes with a super heavy amount of powder if you're being photographed with flash, um, trust me. I'm gonna take the Lunar Beauty Moon Prism Blush Palette, which if you're ever on the fence about this blush palette, if you like blush and you don't have much of it even, like this is a, such a lovely palette, I, I love this palette. Because we're going a little more bridal, I'm going to take Stargaze, which is that like mid-tone pink. And then on top of that, I think, I'm going to put Soleil, which is the like peachy, has a little bit of a shimmer. The rest of those blushes are matte except for Soleil. As I've spoken about before, I am fairly heavy-handed with blush on myself, like purposefully. For weddings, I tend to go a little heavier on blush. Not quite as heavy as I go on myself, but I will go a little heavier on blush for brides because blush is something that fades pretty quickly and photos can really wash you out. So if you don't have any color on your cheeks, you end up just looking kind of flat in photos. 
So I like to do a little bit of a heavier application of blush because it will wear down quite a bit throughout the day. And I always will tell brides when I'm doing makeup on them, I let them look at the end to see what they think of it. I always say everyone they get their makeup done wants to look at themselves this close up, like they put their mirror right to their face, look at every single detail, which is fine to look at the up close detail. I always tell them, look at yourself close up like that, but also look at yourself further away in a mirror that's like six feet away from you because keep in mind when your photographer's doing your photos most of them aren't going to be right up in your face they're mostly going to be from a distance so you want to make sure that you like the way that it looks in both capacities and your photographer will edit your photos so like if you have a, pr a pimple or like something that you don't want to be super visible in your photos just mention it to your photographer and they I'm sure they would edit it out for you um because they want you to feel your best in your wedding photos too they don't they don't want you to be looking at your photos and being like oh why did i why didn't i ask her to do that or why didn't i get them to edit that out i wish i had just gotten them to edit that pin below or whatever so talk to your photographers they will help you i have mentioned this in passing quickly before but i can't use the anastasia shadows on my lower lash line because my eyes react to them in a way that is very uncomfortable so i'm gonna take this guy taboo from my ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. I'm taking that on my flat definer brush and then I'm just gonna place that right along my lower lash line on the bottom here. And then with my teeny little um, taper blending brush, I'm gonna take that and blend out the edges a little. With my pinky, I'm gonna take Pearl right here, that light kind of creamy shade. Put that in my inner corner just to give us a little bit of brightness there. I'm just gonna put on some mascara off the camera. Okay, so I did put a warm brown liner in my waterline. I just used Woodsy from ColourPop, and then I just lined my lips with the Beauty Bay lip liner in the color Whip. I have this teeny little baby NARS Power Matte lip pigment. It's essentially just a liquid lipstick. Always tell brides and anyone I'm doing makeup on, find a lipstick that you like, like either from the drugstore, it's, you don't have to go crazy and spend a lot of money on it. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. There's a ton of really nice lip products at the drugstore. Just grab one that you really like and bring it with you because your lips are something that are going to wear off during the day because talking and kissing and eating, they're the first thing that's gonna be needing to be touched up. I quite like that applicator. It's a little stiffer than some other ones I've tried. That formula actually is really, it's very thin. It's very like watery almost. It covers like nice and opaque. It's really a nice color actually. This color is called American Woman. Yeah, that's actually quite comfortable. If I was actually doing this look on a bride, I would most likely like nine times out of 10 be putting false lashes on her. I'm not putting them on myself because I don't feel like it. But I will tell you when I do false lashes on brides, what I will do is take a brush like my little flat definer, take that and put a darker, I sometimes will do a dark brown, sometimes I'll do black um, eyeshadow and just line their lash line with it on the top. That way when you place your lashes, there's that little bit of darkness there so they're not so obvious that they're false lashes. And then once you place your lash on, wait for your glue to dry completely. And then I will take the same color that I used to line the eye. And then I'll put a little bit more on top of the lash because sometimes you'll be able to see the glue. So if you put that shadow right on top of the glue, it blends in a lot better. Um, makes it a lot less noticeable that you have false lashes on. Oh my God, I didn't put a highlighter on. Take the Anastasia Amrezi highlight and just put that on. Yeah, so this was my kind of loose representation of a bridal look because I can't do Ashley's bridal makeup this weekend. I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday, I think it is today, right? I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. I really am. It's really nice to sit at the window and just like have the sun coming in. It's lovely. Yeah, that's it for me. Bye!